Sykes Accounting and Consulting. Welcome to Sykes Accounting and Consulting Radio Show. I am your host, Anthony Sykes. Hello, everyone. Uh, Welcome to RantRadioNetwork.com. I'm Anthony Sykes, and I'm glad that you joined us. Uh, Give us a call. Let us know what you think at 855-969-7268. Visit the website, www.sykesaccounting.com. If you have a question that you'd like me to answer on the next show, uh, email me at asykes at sykesaccounting.com. Now, I I do invite you to visit our website, sign up for our newsletter. Uh, It always has interesting things, whether you're in business or not. It's geared toward everybody. And as we enter the final, I guess, three months, October, November, December of this year, and 2013 has gone by pretty fast, at least to me, um... I'd like to talk about a couple things before we get into the show. Uh, One of them is I know it seems to be too soon to talk about taxes. And that is a primary focus of this show is taxes, is business. And we have some other things that we talk about a little bit uh, in general. And that is the state of California, the state of California in terms of how it treats business and its residents, um, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, later. It's a rounded kind of show, but our mission is to help you if you have a business, if you're thinking about going into business, because we want you to be prosperous. Uh, you can always call my office for a free consultation or set up an appointment for one at 562-864-2341. Now, I had a, a email from uh, someone uh, last week, uh, and it talked about the uh, Obamacare, the, the uh, health insurance. Now, some major things are taking place, but the biggest one is due uh, January 1st. And I guess I should do a couple other things before I get into that. And I want you to save this date. That is Wednesday, October 23rd. 2013 because I'm having a workshop on small business and I'll talk a little bit about that in the next section of this program but the health care the Obamacare as it's commonly known um, it's it's taking place October 1st is the deadline to have the letters done now what letter are we talking about Uh, The employers need to have uh, notify the employees whether they have insurance or or if they are providing insurance, I should say, or not. uh, There is a letter that they need to have the employees sign and and look at. And the reason is uh, that is a component uh, because every state is supposed to, to create an affordable insurance network. And uh, if the employees do not have health insurance, they're supposed to be able to go online and find an insurance policy um, that will fit them and their budget. Um, now, the, the letter is a, is a little short form. If you call me or email me, I'll get it to you. And the reason being is there was a fine attached to it if you do not have it done. Now you say, well, do you need to turn it in? No, you don't need to turn that that in. Um, It's something that you keep. Now keep in mind that IRS has the responsibility for checking on this. Now you can begin to see what the responsibilities of IRS are going to be, as well as the Department of Labor. Uh, IRS will be checking on firms, on companies, large and small, just to see if they have this letter. If they don't, that penalty can be $100 uh, per person. And if not, if you don't have it, uh, that $100 per person, if you have a lot of employees, can add up. 
and that could be uh, there could be interest and penalty attached to that. I don't know. The good news right now is that a memo came out last week, and that penalty has, for the time being, been set aside, mostly because a lot of employers did not know they had to have this letter. So they're kind of giving us a little leeway to get that letter in place, get it signed, get it to the employees, notify the employees about the insurance exchange that the state of California has created and will become active starting January 1st. So if uh, out there in the audience you need a copy of this, hey, feel free to call me, 562-864-2341, or email me. I will send you a copy. It's fairly easy to fill out. Uh, it has the employee name, the phone number, uh, and everything else uh, is just the employer part. There's another letter that the employee would sign that says, yes, I know about the exchange, and that's it. So uh, for all you employers out there who have employees, that is something to keep in mind. Uh, you do have to have this letter. I don't know if the wording has to be uh, any type of wording. It may be a letter that you can make up. I could not find that as I read through this bill, but I do know every employee has to be notified that they can get insurance. Now, that brings up another thing. Uh, within EDD, uh, the subject of independent contractors, they will be looking more and more at employers who claim that uh, they, they're using independent contractors. If these people are deemed to be employees, what is going to happen? Uh, was once uh, in, in normal, in the past, what would happen is you could pay the, the uh, taxes and so on. But now you have another issue, and that is this health insurance issue. So whether you're providing insurance or not, uh, that's sort of a, a, a side issue if you're dealing with independent contractors. Because if they are deemed to be employees by EDD and or IRS, you have to make sure they have this letter. So that's another bit of paper that you're going to have to deal with. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, as we get closer to the end of the year, this health care uh, coverage is becoming a bigger and bigger item. I know that some of you, uh, if you've uh, listened to the radio, I listen on and off to uh, news radio. There are ads and, and there are also some uh, I've seen on the Internet and, and newsprint that uh, the, the far conservative and they try not to attach themselves to any, any politicians. Uh, they're trying to defund Obamacare and or if they can't hold up the, uh, the budget so that that would be leverage in doing this. Uh, the problem will be if they, they do not reach an agreement on the budget and of course the government technically stops um, then you'll have other things going into play. Uh, we still have not had any uh, talk about new tax changes. I don't know if there are going to be any. Unfortunately, we've set, or the government has set, a kind of dangerous proposition, a, or a dangerous, not proposition, I'm sorry, a dangerous precedent, and that is by setting up the new laws uh, into the next year. While it may not affect the average person, uh, or they may not think it does, it affects everyone because we, the preparers, have to then uh, wait until our software vendors have completed the changes. We have to then make sure we know and understand how that law is to be applied, and then we have to apply it to our clients when we prepare their taxes. Uh, we could have been planning a strategy and that happens more now than it has been ever in the past of doing one thing to 
uh, save taxes. And the next thing we know, those um, those parts of the law or that part that we were looking at to help our clients retain uh, more of their uh, earnings now is not valid. And so all of a sudden, uh, people end up paying more taxes. That was partly an unintended, um, uh, 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 but partly it was intended, I should say, it was both intentional and unintentional done by the government. Again, remember, the objective is to bring in more income to run the government. So we have to remember that uh, when we plan, when we create a business, we need to make sure that not only our business, but we look at investments, and, and those investments need to be able to provide us that, that income that we need, and also we have to make sure that we can retain more of our, our hard-earned money uh, when it comes to taxes. So a kind of tax shelter now becomes more and more relevant as we think about it. Um, I want to hear what you think. Give me a call, 855-969-7268. Uh, um, uh, this, this is uh, sort of an open topic. This is going to affect everyone, whether you are an employee or an employer. Uh, the taxes are always going to be here. But more importantly, what's happening is in this day and age, they seem to be changing later and later, and we have less time to plan. And because of that, we end up paying more and more taxes. So you've worked hard all year. You're thinking maybe you'll get a refund of two, three, four thousand dollars $4,000. And instead, because the tax ch law changed at the last minute, you now get one or 2000 That's a big difference. And we want to talk about that, but we'll talk more about what's happening after the break. You're listening to the Sykes Accounting and consulting radio show. We'll be right back. The experts know that for pastry, Baker's Bodega has it all. Exclusive brands like Westco Bankmark, Satin Ice, and Pastry Pride. One-on-one -on -one day seminars for cake decorating and gelatin art. So for our service, wide range of ingredients and supplies, and for the low prices, Baker's Bodega has it all. But you don't need to be an expert. Baker's Bodega, 7869 Paramount Boulevard in Pico Rivera. Come, we're waiting for you. Do we have your attention? When it comes to tequila, two things matter. Heart and passion. Never compromising integrity for mass production. Number one, tequila delivers the goods. Taste the heart and passion of Mexico in every bottle. We make it right. We make it fun. Superior tequila. There's only number one. There's only number one. There's only number one. A home is the biggest investment in most people's lives. Buying or selling should be a positive experience. Whether you want to be a wealthy real estate investor or just trying to find a place to call home. At AGR and Associates, we focus on the client's needs. We understand the market better than most. Let us bring the value to you and make the right choice. AGR and Associates, making your dream house a reality. Call us today for a free consultation at 562-882-1976. Or you can log on to www. HGRRealtors.com With the track record of great results bringing knowledge, wisdom, and expertise to you. Hablamos Español. Building a custom home or business is a huge deal. For some, it's the largest project they'll take on in a lifetime. Choosing your team may be the most important part of ensuring a successful building project. Starting a project by working closely with Core Design will create what's just right for your lifestyle and your property. But selecting the right builder is perhaps the most important part of creating the team. At Core Design's customer service, quality craftsmanship, and integrity are the keys to our company philosophy. Your custom construction dreams are just a phone call away. 
Core Design at 213-453-1609. Once again, that number is 213-453-1609. Welcome to Sykes Accounting and Consulting Radio Show. I am your host, Anthony Sykes. Welcome back, everyone, to RantRadioNetwork.com. I'm Anthony Sykes, and we were talking about the uh, health care and uh, the October 1st deadline that you need to have your employees sign the letter. Now, I went online, uh, the California Insurance uh, Exchange hasn't officially opened. Uh, it's, it doesn't officially start until January 1st of 2014. Now, you can go on, you can look at it. It has a lot of interesting things on there. Uh, it talks about the uh, affordable insurance is, of course, a national uh, priority. Uh, there are several fact sheets. It talks about how uh, the insurance exchange works, how you can uh, get uh, the information that you might want, um, and, and by that, how you can pick a plan. Now, most of the plans, as I have, have researched, usually have a high deductible. Uh, so it can, uh, for a family, I, I think for a, a, a married fam a, a joint family, married couple, that's, the, that's what I'm looking for. The deductible could be as high as $11,000. Um, and that's a lot for a, a single person. It could be as high as $6,000. So there is an element of, of co-pay to this. And what a co-pay is, as you, as you may know, is that when you go to the doctor, uh, you're paying a, a portion of, of that insurance or that bill up front, or you pay it later. So it could be, let's say the bill is $100 and your copay is $30. So the insurance would pay 70 and you're paying 30. That that would be a standard copay. Now what happens a lot of times is that the insurance uh, may not pay uh, for the entire amount of the doctor's bill. That's $70. So they may think or they may claim, uh, they may feel that the ordinary cost for that service that the, the doctor provided should be $60. You still have the copay of $30 because they were only going to pay 70% to begin with up until the deductible has been fulfilled. Now you have to pay that additional $10 because the insurance company is not going to pay that. And that is something that I'm wondering if that's going to continue with the insurance uh, that uh, we will be having in the future. I don't know. I haven't done enough research to find out. But I'm thinking that uh, a little bit of something is better than nothing. And how is it going to interact with Medi-Cal? I don't know that either. So... There's a lot of things that uh, your preparer needs to get up on as well as your insurance agent. Uh, when I first got into this business, I did not consider, uh, I did not foresee at all that I would have to know a lot more about insurance. Although at one time I did have a, uh, an insurance license and at then I knew a lot about health insurance and how it should work. So that, that background that I have now was coming back to surface, uh, and that's how I understood how copays work. Now, uh, options for in, in the, the health care coverage, how it works with small businesses. Um, I'm going to read from this fact sheet just a little bit. The Covered California Small Business Health Options Program is developing a marketplace specifically for small businesses with one to 50 eligible employees. What's, uh, what they're doing, they're getting some insurance companies together who will offer a plan uh, 
for companies with less than 50 employees if you wish to provide insurance to your uh, employees. And if you do and you pay more or up uh, at least 50 percent, you then can take a tax credit on your taxes. That is the small business can. And that tax credit is dollar for dollar to offset um, any taxes that you may owe. That's an incentive for small businesses to try to, uh, at least in part, offer and pay for uh, health insurance for their employees. Now, how is that going to work out in terms of the cost for that business? Well, give us a call. Uh, we can help you. We have a, a um, analyzer program that will help you look at your expenses and help you determine just how efficiently your company can be and where you might be able to reduce some expenses in order to uh, afford the insurance. Now, what some people are fearing and some are saying, well, we'll just cut everybody back to part time and we will not uh, offer insurance. Well, that's one way of doing it, but that could also backfire because then you're not going to be as productive. And if you're not as productive, your competition is going to overtake you. Or if you have to hire more part timers, then your overall payroll is going to be higher. And again, your competition could overtake you. So uh, I'm going to I may talk a little bit more about this uh, later, but I want to cover some things that I think are uh, also important. And that is I have an upcoming uh, uh, seminar with uh, TeleQ. And uh, it's going to be Wednesday, October 23rd from 9 to 12. It's going to be at Tamayo Restaurant, 5300 East Olympic Boulevard. That's in Los Angeles. Um, I guess you could say it's closer to East Los Angeles. And you need to contact Sonia, Ms. Sonia Gonzalez at 323-832-5477 to reserve. This is a free seminar, but you do need to reserve a space. Uh, we're also going to have a couple other speakers. Um, one is Cathay Bank. And what the topic is, is something that all businesses need to think about, or even if you're going into business, and that is a business plan, especially now. If you're thinking about going into business as a uh, owner, you're going to need to think about how uh, your business is going to grow, what you're going to do uh, with your business, and who's going to be in that business with you how uh, that business is going to proceed from point A to point B and, uh, you know, how you want to project your earnings and how efficient can you make that business. The reason being is that um, if you're going to get a loan, uh, whether from SBA or from a bank or even from investors, they want to know how you're going to grow this business. They want to know what you're going to do, uh, what is your plan, and especially in these economic times, you need to have a plan. And what we'll talk about is uh, how to create that, uh, starting from the reason, you know, what does a business plan do? What does it do for you? Well, it makes you think about what am I going to do? What if? Uh, what if I run a little short of funds here? Now, how am I going to produce the product? Or what product am I going to produce? I have a choice of three, but I don't really have enough income to uh, produce all three. Which one do I want to produce first? Who's the market for that product? Um, who do I have as my management uh, to help me run this business? Am I running it all by myself? Can I take it uh, from the start and all the way through production. That's a very hard thing to do. When I first started my business, I uh, talked to my client. I got the information. 
I produced the tax return. I made the copies. I gave the client the copies. I then filed the taxes. That was a lot of work. Most of it I didn't, I had to incorporate in my bill uh, because I did all the work. Well, if I'm making copies, then I can't see the next person until I'm done with the next, with that first one. So as I added more staff, I could now see someone, the tax return could be put together, it can be mailed, um, and it got a lot more efficient. Now, if you're producing widgets, you know, an ink pen or something like that, that's a whole lot harder because now you're talking about machinery or something like that. And if you do an order for someone, how many orders can you take before you get too far behind? So those are the things you put in that business plan. What is the summary? What do you plan to do and how do you plan to do it? That's what everyone who wants to put uh, who wants to put money into your business is going to want to know. So keep that in mind. This is an excellent seminar. Um, you can it's an excellent opportunity to network. And I hope you come out. Give us a call. We'll tell you more about it. But more than anything, call Ms. Gonzalez and make that reservation. Now, quickly. I'd like to talk about a couple things that IRS is doing, and one of those are uh, the new, uh, they have a, a new plan if you owe money. It's called the Fresh Start. If you owe less than $50,000 uh, or 50000 or less, you can actually go online and set up an installment agreement uh, as long as you can afford to pay it off in 72 months. So that means um, you, you know, you've got to make sure if you can. If you can't, you still have to do it kind of the old-fashioned way. Call, fill out a financial statement, let them know what you can afford to pay, and then begin to pay it. But they are, are a lot more amenable now than they have been in the past. So we'll talk to you more after the break. On rantradionetwork.com. I'm Anthony Sykes. See you when you come back. You're listening to the Sykes Accounting and Consulting Radio Show. We'll be right back. Three balls, two strikes, the pitch. Make your team look like pros with custom lineup cards. Whether you're our travel team, rec team, all star team, or just some old guys playing slow pitch. We can make your team look a little better with some custom lineup cards. For the umpire, for the opponent, for the scorekeeper, for the dugout, no matter where your lineup card goes, you will look like a big league team with your team logo and name on top of your personalized lineup card. Just visit CustomLineupCards.com. With the best prices in town, you are sure to hit a home run with us. Visit CustomLineupCards.com and go pro. Are you watching the game at home? Why? Come watch it at Mambo Grill, the hottest spot in Downey. You'll have good food, drinks, and a great time at a low price. We have the coldest beer in our sports bar, where you can enjoy the game on any of our huge flat screen TVs. And when your home team wins, you get 25% off anything in Mambo Grill. We're on Downey Avenue, one block north of Firestone, or visit us on the web. Mambo Grill, love at first bite. Hey, bro, this is a good game. You know what would make it better? What, bro? A michelada. A michelada? What's a michelada? A michelada is somewhere in the middle of a Mexican Bloody Mary and a Mexican margarita. Oh, I got you covered, bro. You got a cup in your pocket? No, sir. I got my pocket-sized michelada. Mucho macho michelada. pocket size? pocket size, so you can take it with you anywhere you go. Where'd you get that at? At the nearest convenience store, and you can also buy it at muchomachomichelada.com. You know what will make it better? After we get drunk, if they had a line, we can call. We can call their drunk line. You can leave a message and then log on to the site and listen to your stupidity afterwards. What's that number? It's 855-MICHE69. What's that number again? 855-MICHE69. Awesome. Mucho macho michelada. 
Nurses Life Express provides unique apparel for all the hardworking nurses that wear many hats. It is apparel that expresses nurses' amazing, humorous, and caring personalities. After all, nurses are as influential as their united goal to help others. Nursing's not easy, but somebody's got to do it. For more information, please call 562-270-4312 or visit their website at www.nurselife.com www.nurselyfe.com Nurseslife.com where nurses' lives are expressed. We are the Three Guys Rant coming to you live every Thursday from 5 to 6. You can call us at 855-69-THE-THREE-GUYS. <laughs> it's not the three guys. This is why you should turn in because one has Tourette's. The you other really, one's illiterate. You really should listen, and you never know what's going to happen. 855-69-3-GUYS. G-U-Y-S and the number three, not the. Faces yeah. for radio, voices for the deaf. Look forward to talking to you. Hey, I'm audio candy. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> Welcome to Sykes Accounting and Consulting Radio Show. I am your host, Anthony Sykes. Welcome back to the RantRadioNetwork.com. Uh, give us a call, 855-969-7268. And to my left here is my co-host, Miss Trisha Huguez. Hello. And... And... More taxes. More taxes. <laughs> what we do, and we're going to talk about as it as we get closer to the end of the year, um, you know, the need to plan, and it's tougher. But if you have a corporation, you can uh, find ways to not pay taxes. Uh, there is a report out that talks about the 280 companies who do not pay any taxes at all and these are not companies that uh, you know, have a loss they actually had profits in the hundreds of millions of dollars they just know uh, how to find the credits and that's what they look for are the tax credits that reduce their taxes dollar for dollar I believe that they're um that out of those 280 companies, 1.4 trillion was paid in taxes. However, that wasn't the 35% that they were supposed to be paying. That was actually half of what they were supposed to be paying, meaning there would have been more taxes that needed to be paid, but they just weren't paying it. Um, one of the companies that I believe was the top, the number one, um, didn't hasn't paid taxes in three years, according to the that same article was Pepco. Um, they're a energy company. And I think they're central in like mid America, mid uh, Midwest. I, I think that's where they're centralized. But okay. a lot of the companies were, um, were a lot of energy companies. They had General Electric's was, I think, third on the list. And they hadn't paid any taxes, I believe, in two years. A lot of the companies on that list was showing, um, showing, I think there was about eight companies that hadn't paid in three years, but they all had a profit. Um, that Pepco had a, what was, I think I, t I took a note. They had a profit of 125 million each year. And I don't know, to not pay taxes in three years, I think is ridiculous. Um, well, well, no, that, that is what, uh, most no one likes to pay taxes and now they did pay there were taxes that they paid they paid like payroll taxes and excise taxes and so on but we're talking primarily about income taxes right. um, and again no one likes to pay they pay what they have to pay and what we're talking about is uh, paying the legal minimum that you have to pay that's what these companies do and that's what you can do if you have a company, if you're thinking about creating a company, what you need to think about is uh, hiring a tax professional. Here goes our, our, our ad here. Um, <laughs> because that is what they're supposed to do is know what the tax laws are. Right. You know your product. Uh, their product should be taxes. Our product is taxes, is business development, 
and what we do is help you pay less uh, in taxes. Uh, what is legally legally <laughs> less? <laughs> legally <laughs> less. Uh, there's all <laughs> kinds of ways, but IRS is stepping up enforcement. It's going to go higher, as we talked about, uh, uh, as I talked about earlier in in the show, uh, with the health care uh, coming out in uh, or being officially out October 1st, but uh, going live January 1st, IRS has that responsibility to check all small companies, right. to make sure all companies, to make sure they are compliant. And one of the compliant ways is the letter that all the employees have to receive. Um, I thought, doesn't that start 2016? It's going to, isn't that when the health laws are actually going to take into effect? Well, no, they're, they started in 2010. However, uh, where you get to each each year was a little bit more. In 2010, the insurance companies had to readjust the amount of administrative costs that was built into their uh, their pricing. So uh, while we may or may not have felt it, I think the seniors felt it most with Medicare and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, they were mandated to keep their administrative costs, that's advertising, salaries, and so on, to 20% of whatever they're charging. So if your insurance is, is $500 a month, let's say, then 20% of that, is in, and that's $100, can be only for um, advertising, administrative costs, and the other 400 has to go to medical. Right. So that, uh, in effect, drove, drove down the cost. People actually got rebates or refunds back on their insurance. I was not one of them. <laughs> but uh, and, and this year, with this letter, um, the, the employers starting next year, actually, they'll, they'll be able to, the small employers would be able to look for uh, health insurance, in a in a general pool and and by that traditionally um if you did not have a big company uh, a company with uh 500 or more employees your your um, risk pool as it's called was too small so even though everyone was let's say you could you could say uh, um, uh, 25 and under 25 to eight, 18 to 25 if you had one person who was in their 50s and generally that's the owner 50s or older if you had uh, women who were over 30 that they would raise those yeah. rates because they they risked that there were going to be more health Susceptible, concerns yeah to and you could not get a good uh, uh, a good rate for your insurance so the law says that you have to they can no longer exclude anyone who has maybe diabetes <coughs> excuse me or any other health condition or deny them insurance because of any health condition and they have to treat them as if they were in the general pool that general pool is thousands of healthy individuals and the risk then goes down and the price should come down. Now all that is I call theoretical because there are lots of outs for an insurance company. Well, we are not a political station. We're not a political show, <laughs> however. Today I just um, heard that Obama did confirm that taxes will go up with the new um, health care. I don't know where the taxes are gonna come from. Do you know where they're gonna come from? Oh yeah, uh, I mean, there, there, uh, uh, Medicare. On uh, there's an investment tax. If you, uh, if you're making two hundred thousand or more, and that's adjusted gross income, and what they call modified adjusted gross income, and that's a little difficult to explain, but uh, it, it is it is adding back some things and subtracting some things, and basically your your adjusted gross income becomes. Two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Well, if you have, if you sell stocks or bonds, and uh, in any investment items, and and even 
if you sell your second home, that capital gain then is subject to a 3.8% investment tax. That's where part of that's going to come from. Uh, okay. Even if you sell your personal home. Now, this one I had to do some research on, and that is if your um, capital gain uh, from your home exceeded the exclusion. So that's 250 for a, a single person and a 500,000 for a, a joint couple. If it exceeded that, that too could be, not necessarily is, but could be subject to that 3.8%. And then on top of that, even if you don't have that Medicare tax in, uh, on, on your investments, uh, because maybe they weren't that high if your income, and that is your W-2 income, is higher than $250,000, you could have a higher Medicare tax. So, yes, taxes are going to be higher. Also, um, what they have not touted when they made changes this year to um, the taxes this, this past January, this January, uh, medical, your medical insurance uh, or your medical deduction, it used to be uh, before you got dollar one of uh, a medical deduction, it had your uh, expenses, medical expenses had to exceed 7.5% of your adjusted gross income. And roughly what that is, is it's your income minus your expenses, all that on, uh, or minus your deductions uh, on your page one of your 1040. So mm -hmm. if you had wages and you had an IRA, wages of 10,000, an IRA of 2,000, your adjusted gross income would be 8,000. Well, if it uh, exceeded that, then you would get dollar one. Well, they raised that floor from 7.5% to 10%. So more people are going to end up paying taxes. Before right. you had to be sick. Now you got to really be sick in order to get a medical deduction. So, yes, uh, more people are going to pay taxes. Uh, well, the cost and everything is also going up, though. I, I think I, our co-payment went up from, like, 25 to 75. Um, my son's, my, what, what is, he's having, he was having some procedure done. And it went up from 250, and now it's going to be 350 as an as a walk-in. Right. Um, so I would I would only imagine them raising that from 7.5 to 10 percent because the cost of it is going higher. Right. I don't know. Well, no, they they're getting those in because the the copays then will come down, and so they want to raise it up because they have to take it down. It's kind of an interesting way. I still feel the winner in all this will be the insurance companies, and that's just sort of my point of view. But Yeah, it uh, wasn't my debit card. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we will see you after the break. Uh, you're listening to uh, Tricia and Anthony on the RantRadioNetwork.com. You're listening to the Sykes Accounting and Consulting Radio Show. We'll be right back. Looking for a delicious, fresh family meal that's ready when you are and easy on your budget? Welcome to Piara Pizza. We make our pizzas with handmade dough, 100% real cheese, and tomato sauce blended with our own spices. Nothing is ever frozen. We always have large pepperoni and cheese pizzas fresh and waiting for you for only $5. Or choose one of our specialty pizzas. We have veggie, meat lovers, supreme, and Hawaiian. Add an order of our amazing hot wings, cheesy bread, or breadsticks. Our locations are ultra modern, ultra clean, and open seven days a week. Visit any one of our locations today. Or check us out on the web at www.piarapizza.com. Piara Pizza. Fresh, hot, and ready for you when you come in. Stop in for your Piara Pizza today. The Share Foundation is the health division of the Koi Chiropractic Institute, a 501c3, 509a2 public nonprofit organization dedicated to the growth and development of the natural health care services. In particular, through the chiropractic profession, 
offering health services at the share clinics in the greater Los Angeles area. Your donations can help in expanding these facilities across the nation. Research programs and public education thus offering a solution to the many of the health challenges we face. Your donations are tax deductible and can be sent through our website at www.sharefoundation.com. That's www.sharefoundation.com by clicking on the donation button. Thank you. <laughs> Number one. Wow. Number one. Is that a starter or as high as you can count? I was ordering number one tequila. Everybody's asking for number one. Great, another fancy bottle. These guys are true artists. Never compromise integrity. They make tequila Come the fashion. Never mass produce. So what are you saying? I'm saying have the number one. Anything less is number two. Number one. <laughs> number one tequila. Been in an accident? Then you need your vehicle professionally repaired? That's exactly what you get when you bring your vehicle to Greg's Auto Body Repair. Free quotes within minutes. We will provide everything you need for a hassle-free auto body repair, from an accurate estimate to working with your insurance company. We will get your vehicle to its pre-accident condition as soon as possible. Greg's Auto Body has been serving Los Angeles County and local cities since 1970. Call us at 562-789-1300. Hey, people, are you ready? Are you ready for some football? Uh, no, it's called a triple threat. Wait, a triple threat of what? Entertainment, gossip, and pure fun. It's Tinseltown Talkies, Thursdays at 6.30 p.m. Only on www.rantradionetwork.com. Don't miss out if you want to be a part of all the action. With Rasha and Pimo. That's right. See you then. Welcome to Sykes Accounting and Consulting Radio Show. I am your host, Anthony Sykes. Welcome back, everyone, to the RantRadioNetwork.com. Give us a call, 855-969-7268. And if you'd like me to answer your question uh, on the next show, email me, asykes at sykesaccounting.com. Um, you're back with uh, Tricia and Anthony. Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> um, you wanted to get into a topic with uh, doing business with the government. Would that be the government subcontracting to certain businesses, small businesses? Um, for what I, I know that you're going to talk about, touch us on a seminar that they're going to be having. Right. The SBA and their. Uh, the Small Business Administration, what their mission is, is to help all small businesses. And um, they're working, and I don't see these very often, in, in uh, Orange County. That's what this one is. They're doing a, a, a seminar. Uh, it is going to, uh, the topic, it's going to be presented by uh, both the City of Lake Forest and uh, the Lake Forest Chamber of Commerce. Uh, it's going to be on uh, this coming or next Friday, October 4th, from 8 to 11:30, and it's how to do business with the government. So, if you're interested in trying to uh, get a a county contract, uh, whether it's for janitorial services or to supply office products or something, uh, they will tell you how to get into the bid system. Uh, what you need to do, how you need to apply to the, uh, uh, when there's a, a, a um, what, what they call those, uh, request for proposals, 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 RFPs, and the things that you need to do to make sure that you're there. One, you should be on the list for small businesses. If you're a minority business, you should sign up for the minority business um, and and let them know a women-owned business, you would sign up for that. And what that means, you get a, a kind of preference point. You're on a different list if you're a veteran, a veteran-owned business, and so on. So the government um, 
each county government does do business with subcontractors uh, because uh, one, uh, they receive federal funds and the federal government says, hey, you must bring minorities and small business into the stream and let them have a chance to survive and to grow. It saves them on taxes as well, right? Well, it's supposed to save us on taxes. Um, I'm not sure how much that does, but it helps It helps the company. And by saving us, it means that uh, if, if you subcontract out the janitorial services, that means you do not have to have county janitorial. Uh, yeah. So, yes, it could save us some services. And uh, as you know, the... Uh, the government, county, whether it's local, the county, or the state, uh, have been in the news, in and out of the news, because of their retirement program. It is very possible that you could, um, all your working life, uh, earn less than $50,000 a year, but when you retire, you will be getting uh, $50,000 and maybe a little bit more depending on how long you live. And that just seems to put a strain on the system because that means taxes are going up. Right. That's why L.A. County has a problem. The city of L.A. has the problem. And more than anything, the state of California has a problem with all those pension accruals. I bet you those workers from Department of Water and Power don't have a problem with that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, they they don't. But that's that's how they that's how they do that. <laughs> but uh, speaking of saving money, um, a girlfriend of mine asked me, or wanted some information on, you know, with the holidays coming along and everybody's just trying to save some money. Christmas and and Thanksgiving, um, turkeys are eighty dollars now. I'm gonna make my first turkey this year. Okay. Um, I. They want to know, should they not fill out a W-4 again and claim more dependents so they could save a little? And what do you suggest or what do you recommend that they do? <laughs> or not so, I mean, I know that it, it's a it's a odd question, but, you know, they're going to have to change it. They're going to end up having to pay. Once they once they do their taxes, they're going to have to file the correct way with the correct amount of dependents, um, paying back whatever they owe. Um, I'm glad you brought that up. That can be dangerous. Uh, one, if you you do this, uh, you can you can change your your number of exemptions anytime. You can fill out a W-4 every week. Uh, there's nothing in the rules that say you can't. Where you get into trouble is if you forget to change it back. If you go uh, and you really aren't supposed to go exempt, if you go exempt, your employer is supposed to notify both uh, Franchise Tax Board and IRS because there are only certain rules you have to there, there you have to have a certain there has to be a certain rule in order for you to go exempt but people do it all the time and uh, if you forget to change it back then you will owe taxes but what will happen it could set in motion and we have a a, a case right now where IRS has then sent a letter to the employer saying that until further notice you will withhold from this person at single zero and that is the highest rate you can have right right well what i've never understood if it's it's not recommended if it's not legal to claim exempt why do they allow it well okay uh you mean the government yes or the employer the, the government well i know the employer can only get their well, no, the employer is the one who, who allows it. Uh, the only time you can go exempt, and there are a couple other exceptions, is if you're earning less than $200 a week and you have more than four dependents, which means that you weren't going to pay taxes anyway. Oh, yeah. So they're, 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 they're fairly 
um, uh, I guess, constrained uh, guidelines in which you can go exempt. Uh, people do it. You have it in the in any any time there are bonuses because bonuses the uh, withholding rate is higher mm -hmm. and people don't like that they want to have more of that money in their pocket and unfortunately as the holidays you have two uh, I guess now three if you count uh, Halloween uh, holidays kind of bunched up at the end of the year when a lot of other things come due and people feel that pinch for money uh, no four because I'm, I, I forgot New you Year's. have New Year's, you New have Year's Christmas, Day. and you have Thanksgiving. And Thanksgiving generally is a four-day holiday where people fly, or if not fly, they travel. If not that, they do partying for mm -hmm. three of those four days. So you have a lot of uh, expending of money, and people want to make sure they have that money to do. Uh, and they they look at, okay, if I reduce it here then I can. Well, you have to remember that on January 2nd to change it and Back. possibly, uh, yeah, to change it because that's the start of the new year. But you can't have claimed more exemptions through the rest of the year or you're going to come out owing. And if you do, they may come back and punish you. So put that on your calendar, January 2nd, change it back. That's right. <laughs> if you're going to do it, change it back. If you're going to do it, change it back. Oh. Don't, don't forget, <laughs> don't get used to that big paycheck. And, uh, you know, it's, it's human nature to get used to that, uh, the more money. Yeah. Uh, and what will happen is they, they forget. There's always something that's going to take that extra. And before you know it, it's, it's gone. And uh, that's what happened in our, our current client that we're, we're working on trying to set some things up for them. They are in a, in, a, in a situation where now they can't make ends meet because of the enforced withholding. Hmm. Um, I want to touch back on the corporations real okay. quick with their tax withholdings, or not even their tax withholding, with their... Um, credits that they get from the government. Mm -hmm. um, when they, for example, one of the companies didn't file for two years. Right. How are they still able to get these tax credits? Um, and just, con I mean, they're, they're getting millions in tax credits. How are they able to do so? And they're not, I mean, yeah, they're paying the sales tax or what, and what you mentioned earlier, but right. how are they able to still get these credits when they're making such a profit on, you know, a hundred and something million dollar profit? Well, okay, the, the, the short answer is that um, the, the tax laws, um, they don't need to, to change them. All they need to do is, um, I, I guess, um, in, enforce them or restructure them. Uh, you, if you have a corporation, you are entitled to the same deductions and credits as General Electric. The problem is people don't know. What General Electric does, and I pick on them because they're the best example, they have a, a department of accountants who that's all they do. Uh, you have the employment tax credit. You have the health tax credit. You have a veterans credit. You have a, a, a credit for energy reduction. So there's a lot of credits and going these guys green. look at, and they, they go for, and that's they, they save the money. They're going to spend the money anyway. Plus then these guys are multinationals, and they're, they can do some things that others can't. Uh, and I guess we're running out of time here. So uh, this is Trisha Huguez and Anthony Sykes. This is the Rant Radio Network. You're listening to the Sykes Accounting we'll and Consulting show. Radio Show. We'll be right back. I'm not sure what Mike just said. I think it was Puerto Rican. But hey, if you want to hear it in English, give it to me. Up next, Sykes Accounting and Consulting. Welcome to Sykes Accounting and Consulting Radio Show. 
and I am your host, Anthony Sykes. To watch our stupidity live, head over to ratradionetwork.com. <laughs> Good colors and 